Hello and welcome to this video on a simple but compelling game called Conway's Game of Life. This is an old zero player game in which everything is set from the beginning and unfolds from there. As a program it makes for an excellent model of how a system can self replicate or fail based on a seemingly random initial state. This is great if you're thinking of how can we model the growth and expansion in a given population, whether that's humans, bacteria, killer AI, whatever it happens to be. Although we call it a game, and that is the name provided by the creator, John Horton Conway, it's not strictly a game in the terms you might be familiar with. The fact is it's a zero player game, which means it plays out itself in a turn based process. Given that this was created in the 70s, it explains both the very retro style and the bizarre way it works. At the time, home computing wasn't really a thing, and so computers were very expensive, very large equipment that was really only held at universities and big businesses. That's why this game is so interesting now. It can be done at home on just about any low-end PC, laptop, and probably even a tablet or phone. Like any game, it must have rules. The way the rules work in this is that in each step in time, or turn, a transition will occur. The way these transitions occur is that a cell or a square is either alive and therefore coloured in, or dead, which is uncoloured or white. If there is a live cell with fewer than two neighbours adjacent to it, it will die due to underpopulation. This is much like, say, inbreeding. Any cell that is alive with two or three live neighbours will carry on to the next generation or turn. Any live cell with more than three live neighbours will die. This would be a replication of overpopulation, for example, lack of water or food. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbours will become populated or become alive, and this is described as being similar to reproduction. These rules are the fundamental basis of what occurs each turn. In order for the whole process to be summarized, there were three rules that were defined. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors will live, any dead cell with three live neighbours will become alive, and any other live cells die if they don't fit into the first or second category in the right way. Any other cell will stay dead. Conway's game starts from something called a seed. In Minecraft and other progressively generated games, this is a value that spawns everything else. Basically, the calculations spring from here, and everything is based on that. In Conway's game, it is the arrangement of the organisms that the system depicts. From here, it incrementally turns over. These turns are called ticks, just like a working clock. Each tick it generates outcomes from the previous turn, or at the very first tick, the initial seed or setup. Almost similar to the way turns in chess occur. Each turn, a piece is moved, or in the case of Conway's game, calculations are made and each cell will change accordingly. As a depiction of population growth and changes, Conway's game is really good. This is true because he held onto certain rules that were meant to exemplify how populations should grow. This further fit with what we know of population growth. The first and most obvious thing is there should be no explosive growth. You don't find that between one year and the next, suddenly a population will triple. Admittedly, assuming an equal distribution of males and females, the population would increase by half, but that's not the same kind of explosive growth you would see if every cell could suddenly be populated or every body could suddenly reproduce. Next is there should exist small initial patterns which over time would undergo chaotic changes. These mean in theory you could have different and very unpredictable outcomes from the same seed each time. 
there should be potential for von Neumann universal constructors. These are specific classifications of structures within the game, and we won't go into too much detail on those here. The rules should be as simple as possible, while following the first three rules. And this is what we see with what he set down as the rules for the game, about which cell should live and which should die, and under what circumstances. As anyone who plays games regularly, you will know that there will eventually be patterns that you can learn from it. Whether this is not to trust chests in Dark Souls, tower locations in defense games, or how to abuse the Reaper AI in The Sims. The same patterns appeared in Conway's game over time. These patterns were given several categories. They were still life, oscillators, and spaceships. The first are, as the name suggests, stationary shapes. The second, something that will switch between two states. The last will migrate across the environment of Conway's game. You can think of the last of these as being somewhat similar to migration from one country to another, both on a large and small scale. Think of the uh, period of mass colonization across the world. Large numbers of people would leave, say, Europe or Africa and go to places like America. Your oscillators are groups that will change between two particular configurations. For example, you could see this being replicated through the distribution of voting patterns. The first are your stationary shapes, populations that don't really change, largely because they've met the constraints of their environment. Think about what happens with a petri dish when you put a microbial population into it. It will grow until it completely covers the dish, and then it will cease growing in terms of expanding because it's literally run out of room. Conway's game has grown and developed a lot since it was first developed, and there have been added layers of complexity to it. Self-replicating systems, um, creation of more complex structures, and a lot more that wasn't encapsulated with the very first game, but admittedly that was from 50 odd some years ago, and you can't really expect it to have held up exactly the same way since then, that it as accurately replicates populations as effectively as it does is impressive and should be taken as just that. Hopefully you found this interesting and the footage you've been seeing in the background is something you can do yourself by going to the website that we used. And we'll provide a link for that in the description box below. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have below.